I am not a numbers person. And I'm not even going to go into Asian stereotypes here, OK? But, uh, and I was bad at math. But you turn all of this data into something that's so digestible. And I'm telling you guys, it's poetry in here, the way you write. Thanks. OK. So OK, Cupid. Uh -huh. Now, you're kind of an insider of yes. an organization <laughs> that takes a lot of data, big yeah. data. OK, so tell us, are we putting a lot of information out there? And where is this going? Well, well, yeah, the answer is yes. But I mean, to be clear to everybody, like a lot of the things like your home address and this kind of stuff, like we don't have. Like, right. You know. No. And, and also, well. And you also took a lot of data stuff. from beyond OKCupid. Okay yeah, yeah. You know, and, and we all really want to know about our dating lives, too. <laughs> but so. the, the book um, really deals with the things that people do, like who you message and who you click on and the stuff that's not so self-stated, you know, the, mm -hmm. the who we are when we think no one's looking thing is like, you can say that you're whatever, I'm like 5'10", or maybe 5'11". I can say that I'm 6'1", or 6'2", online, I'm obviously not. You, you can take what somebody says, yeah. and then what they actually are, what they go do, um, and look at the sort of the disparity between the two. I think there's a lot of that going on, right? Where there's yeah, there the, the best photo possible, and you look nothing like that photo, and the date shows up, and you're yeah. like, what's happening here? Well, okay. yeah. I mean, it's, a, it's also like in real life, though. I mean, you know, people bullshit uh, all the time, but like I, right now. Yeah, oh, yeah. This is, I hope you'll find this BS interesting, guys. Yeah. No, this is not BS, trust me. Well. Okay, so let's get to this. You're saying that computers, like human beings, we have blind spots, and computers can actually help us see these blind spots. Well, yeah, or, or yeah, the, mm, you know, even to surveys, people project their best version of themselves. Right. You know, just like you would to your wife's parents or to uh, a college admissions process or some test on the internet. If, if we're saying, you know, hey, do you think um, interracial relationships are wrong? You know, no, nobody is going to say yes to that in, in 2014 in the United States. Um, However, then, of course, when you go out and watch what people then go do with their time or choose to, where they choose to spend their attention, just as one example, you, know, you see that people don't obey that, 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 uh, that belief or don't, their actions don't reflect that belief as much as you would expect, for example. So. Okay, so let's, let's start from the beginning because I want everyone to be on the same page, okay? So all of online, OkCupid, okay you know, Facebook, Twitter, Google, mm -hmm. They can discern things about who we are from just what we click and what we put in. Yeah, or they can tell a story like, that's, that's like kind of outside of, say, the media narrative. I mean, to use the, the previous speakers, um, you know, Elena was talking about uh, Grant Park and mm -hmm. the night Obama was first yeah. elected. And, you know, that was a moment, even for Republicans, where it was a, it was a kind of this, there's a lot of bonhomie in the air. One was like, you know, we're excising some racial demons here. And there's all this multiracial crowd, all this joy in the park. And, you know, even pe people in Brooklyn were celebrating the streets, all this. Um, also, at the exact same moment, that, that one night was the all time high ever in the recorded history, at least of Google, that first searches for the N word, um, looking for racist jokes for the most part. Um, so while that and event was going on, well, that night, yeah. yeah, yeah, on Google, everyone was. Well, not everyone, but the like but the, the high. Of, yeah, the, it's like if you go look at Google Trends, it's this huge spike. And in fact, if you go back, um, I was talking to someone who works at Google, and he made this observation to me. And so I went back to Google Trends, which is a tool anyone else can visit. It's just Google.com/trends. And if you kind of mess around with the parameters, you can get a picture of searches for the N word. Uh, over that whole 2008 com campaign, and whenever it gets tense, whether it's in the primary or whether it's in the general election, um, searches go up. You know, racial animosity spikes, and so in, you know, Iowa, the Pennsylvania primary with Clinton, which was so contentious, um, the uh, when she concedes uh, in I think June, um, there's these spikes, and they are ever higher, and then finally there's the the kind of mother of all spikes there on election night. And then, and then there's this catharsis. So after you spike, there everything dips, and just like that. And then there was one more peak on. Um, Inauguration Day, and then the only two spikes anywhere remotely approaching that level have were, were there's only been two since 2008, um, and that was the that kind of week when Trayvon Martin's death first came to public attention, and then uh, the the week that Zimmerman was acquitted. So it's like the it's like you can kind of see um, a kind of like the you can measure the animosity that doesn't often get reported. Right, because basically it's the title like who we are in public isn't necessarily it's it's a presentation. It's, right, it's, sure. And who we are in private and online, sure. it's more or less who we really are. 
Yeah, I mean, certainly for things like search and, and for who you decide to message. Obviously, if people, again, it's like the difference between a questionnaire, which is meant to sort of uh, replicate or be a, a, a simulation of real life or a lab environment, which is supposed to simulate real life. Well, I just um, want everyone, every, you know, there was the cloud from Apple, as mentioned, and there's this yeah. the global cloud of information that we're all putting all that information, all you guys are raising your hands to. Let's talk about a little bit like how scary it was, because I read in your book that you know, there are search engines and social media platforms that actually know whether or not with pretty good accuracy, like in the 80% whether you're gay or not. Oh yeah, for sure, yeah. How does that, how, how is that possible? Well, uh, because, I mean, you know, like, because... Based on what you like? Yeah, in the same way that Target knows that, you know, when you're pregnant or whatever, because you're looking, I mean, the, the pregnant is a very easy thing to figure out. If someone's looking for pregnancy tests and then is looking for, like, iron pills and, okay. uh, you know, that kind of stuff, you know, it's, it, you're like, okay, this person is pregnant. But there, there's, there's a very, there's, you can extrapolate that, um, mm -hmm. and, and there's things that people do in common and in aggregate that you can make a guess about somebody. Okay, so if that didn't, like, jolt you. There's some aggregates that help you know whether or not your parents were divorced by the age you were 20. How, yes. many, how many people's parents were divorced by the time they were 20? 21. Okay, 21. How did it knows that? With, I mean, with, with, it, see, that's the thing, like an aggregate, it's an aggregate guess, so that's, I think the accuracy on that one was 60%. Yeah. Um, so, you know, they don't know whether any one individual, because each person's story, personal story is, is different. Right. There can be people. Uh, people can live all kinds of lives, you know, it's not a pigeonholing type of thing. It's more like there, there's a high correlation between the things that you like mm -hmm. and your personal biography or your personal demographics. And in the book, it's kind of, it's split into three parts. Um, one, of, one is about connecting. Data is about how we're feeling. The uh -huh. second part is about division, and we're going to talk about race in that part. Um, and then also then, we're, in the end, we're going to talk about the individual. So, okay, so let's take it back to OK Cupid. Sure. So, let me tell you how depressed I was when I read in your foreword that if you're a woman over the age of 21, it's kind of basically over for you. Well, oh, wait, wait, wait. According I mean, to that, some that, of the... That's, like, that, can, is, that is can a you sensational headline. Uh, I, mean, I mean, you're definitely... You're, you're, uh, men of all ages think 20-year-old women are the hottest. That is not like... Uh, uh, within the age of 20 to 50. So technically, I guess, yes, aesthetic, you're, you're over the hill. Um, <laughs> so that, that's... Uh, but you know that's that's that that's at the same time it, like this data lets you see these kinds of phenomena with a specificity or a clarity that you couldn't otherwise. But it's also no secret that men like younger women. I mean, you can look in a magazine or or any element of media for five minutes and you can realize that because that's who you see on the screen. But women, of course, the mo more evolved sex. Tell us what they what they yeah, what the, age women, group they're looking for. Women vote. They, they, there's a kind of there's a parody. You know, so a 20 year old woman wants a, tw a 20 year old guy looks best to a 20 year old woman. A 25 year old guy roughly to a 25 year old woman. 30 to 30. 35 to 35. And then. Uh, it's basically kind of one-to-one -one until guys hit 40, and then they're like, okay, that's cool. You don't have to get any older. <laughs> so, you know, 45 or kind of older women still prefer a guy to start being, would prefer a guy to start being. So basically men point. never grow up, and uh, women uh, change with time, our preferences. Yeah, right? men get older but don't really get, grow up. Yeah, that's yeah mentally. Yeah. Man, just remember that. Yeah. Okay. But, but it's important, like, you know, this is, this is the, the, that data is from people liking each other. It's yeah. like the Tinder thing. You like them, and you're like, nah, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And uh, you can do that on OKQ. Cupid too, and so that's the data of sort of like lust or something. You know, it's mm -hmm. a very easy. It's very you can sit there and make. We made it so that it's easy to, to give your vote quickly on a lot of people because that way we can collect a lot of information about you and those people. Um, but you don't have to put yourself out there to, to make this vote. You know. Um, so necessarily, like if a guy puts down, I like 21 year olds, and he's like 45. Yeah, it's a He's bummer. not necessarily going to approach a 21 year old. Yeah. Right. At a bar. Exactly. You're right. Because when you actually have to make an well, even online, you have to go put yourself out there and put make, you know write that person a message. Mm -hmm. You know, there's like pride and taboo and this fear of rejection and like all this other crap that gets mixed in. And so guys do compromise. You can see there's like this is what I want, uh, and this is what I think I can get away with. And so they they <laughs> they like adjust along like that. So usually it's like t 10 to 15, 10 to 15 uh, years younger. Oh my so goodness. Moves in little brackets. You don't grow up and then you just want to get away with just that. Just take it to that point. Okay. <laughs> so um, now you also discovered like phrases, like preferred phrases and unpreferred 
phrases like. Well, yeah, I mean, the, the part in your book, in the book you're talking about, where I, I just took all the profile text that everyone had mm -hmm. written about themselves on OkCupid okay um, and sort of tried to distill for particular groups, like, uh, you know, uh, white men or Asian women or whatever, the phrases that they used that were um, typical only to them, it, okay. it, statistically, you know, so. I noticed with Asians, um, both men and women would write, I'm very tall for, for an Asian. Yeah. For an Asian. Yeah. So. yeah, that was the number one phrase for both men. Okay. And yeah. <laughs> now, all right, so you're getting all this information on OkCupid from everybody, right? Yeah. Um, and they're being honest because they don't know. It's not like Facebook or Twitter, right? It's not out there for your friends and family to see, so then they can admonish you for posting that, right? Well, some of the data is, I mean, like the stuff, I, there's two kinds of data. There's like, people sent, when they're, they choose someone to send a message to you or to like. I mean, they're honest. There's no incentive for you to like someone, to write a message to someone that you don't like, or that doesn't even make sense. But people definitely do exaggerate how tall they are or like how cool they are in their profile text. Or like, you know, it's just like people do at a bar or right. whatever. You know, it's like, yeah, I'm an army ranger. I got the scar. You know, it's like the same bullshit that people do in person. <laughs> hey, by the way, speaking of scars, you said a more visible tattoo in a profile picture makes you more desirable? Uh, it, well, it, get, it tends to get you more messages than someone who's equivalently hot. That is that. Oh, I mean, it's a kind of a, hot. it's like weird statistical so argument. So if you're up against someone as really out. hot as you, make sure you get a tattoo and it's visible in the profile pic. Yeah, if you can swing that. Okay, okay, power all right. Yeah. <laughs> okay, but you know what? There's some fascinating things that you found, such as like, you're basically collecting all this da data so that you can basically like, go directly into, you know, like matching people. Yeah, I mean, you need, you, like running a dating site is like, uh, running an enormous warehouse full of single people milling around. And you've got to like figure out how to get them to talk to each other, but not everybody talk to just like the one hot girl or the hot guy. And so there's a lot of community management that goes in, or like a lot of like um, <laughs> refereeing, sort of, so to speak. So, so like, you know, we collect, the, the, the data that we use for the most part is for two things. One, we want to try to recommend someone to you that we think you're going to like, and two, we want to solve for this thing we call the focus problem, where uh, that's just a name we made up. Um, it's where uh, no matter what kind of crap you put on the page, how your cool essay and our match percentage and um, all this other data, uh, the thing that people really look at is the photo. So on any page, they're just going to gravitate to focus on the one hot person on the page and click on that. And that person gets too many messages. They obviously get, they get grossed out or like, this is too much work. I'm done. Uh, the people who wrote the messages don't get any replies. So they either leave because they're like, fuck this, or <laughs> Or they like double down, they're like, all right, I just gotta send more messages, and they do that to the next person, <laughs> and it just becomes this big race to the bottom. So we, we have to like, that was one of the first problems that we had to actually get data to solve. Okay, and one of the things you found is like the subtler, the more subtle questions tend to be ones that match people better than necessarily. Well, it, well I mean, with, I, know, I know exactly what the one question you're talking yeah. about, like do you like scary movies? I mean, that, yeah. that, was, that was an easy, that was a question that was, um, easy to ask on like, say, hey, do you want to have kids? Or, or yeah, do you believe Yeah, so don't ask, what are your yeah. dreams? What are yeah, your aspirations? It's, it's not one of these kind of, like, that is not really Do you really like ice date. cream is better? Yeah, that's not really first date material, that, that kind of like <laughs> God and abortion and this kind of stuff. People don't want to, okay. don't, they don't want to bring it up. So scary movies is kind of like table talk, if you want to think of it that way. And there's a very high correlation between couples that agree, or couples who are successful on okay, but tend to agree, both agree or both disagree on that question. Okay, so now we've kind of been, we've been laughing, we've been joking, I don't want, we're about to run out of time, so joking. I want to, um, oh no, I meant like, you know, you're, you're absolutely fascinating. Oops, that was a joke. You actually transformed this data into something that people find, they can, you know yeah. what I mean? But um, with the, but it also divides us, and you mentioned this a little bit at the beginning of the talk about the race, but what did you discover through compiling the data and race? Like, for example, racial preference. Sure. So, so I mean, I looked at the, the, uh, race, I guess, through two lenses. One was this kind of Google Trends thing that we were talking about yeah. with Grant Park and all that stuff. Um, the other lens was through dating site data, because dating sites are unique sort of online. It's just tons of strangers. You know, everybody on Facebook knows each other, at least the people that they're connected to, and likewise, similarly, on, 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 uh, on Twitter. So it's a ton of strangers just judging each other you know, through the interface, essentially. And so you can get that, that first impression, the data of the first impression. And so I took not just OkCupid, okay um, but three other, two other dating sites, totally different dating sites, different user bases, different interfaces. And you see the exact same, despite all these differences, you see the exact same racial patterns um, on the sites. It's like you took someone, there's a stamp out there in the world, and it was just uh, you know, three times on the data, which is obviously pretty rare, and indicates, well, what is the stamp? You know? And that's, the, I guess, this, this cultural question that we're talking about here. And, and the, the pattern is that 
uh, black men and black women are both underappreciated by maybe like 25 percent, um, and Asian men are as well, um, just kind of universally. Uh, and, and I say underappreciated because I think that it's this, the stamp is like, it's this cultural pattern of how a culture teaches what is beautiful and what is attractive, and, and, and that is imprinted, even, it's obviously it's imprinted on the human beings that are generating this data, and then you can read it back um, in, in, in a matrix. Wow. See, so some really interesting data. Okay, in conclusion, tell us, I mean, and this book is so good. You guys all need to read this book. Thank you. Um, tell us what this data that we're all sending out there is saying about us as a society. Like, what, I mean, you're talking about, like, you know, this is providing a window into yeah. our souls individually and as a society. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a definitely an incomplete window, if that doesn't even really make sense. But it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a window, a small window, or lots of small windows, because obviously the data doesn't capture everyone's complete life, right? But, um, yeah, I don't, I mean, I've talked to, I've actually had this conversation a few times with different people working with big data, and they all say that when I say the same thing. But too, no one's asked the question better than me. Right? No, no, no. It, it, no, just kind of like when we'll just be like, yeah, what, you know, what are, what's your day like kind of situation. And people are like, yeah, the more time you spend with this stuff, the more cynical you become as a human being, because it does, it kind of confirms a lot of your worst, uh, worst instincts about people. Um, so I'm going to leave you guys on that very positive note. <laughs> okay, I have to tell you, this is a brilliant book. Everybody, please go out and read this. I mean, I am not, like I said, I was horrible at math, and um, this is absolutely fascinating. And if you want to learn what kind of uh, profile pic gets you the most hits, read the book, okay? Yeah, how's, that, how's that for a cliffhanger? That'll get some books sold, right, Christian? I hope and he'll so. be Hopefully. signing some books and after, after, after today. So right, thank you she. so much. Yeah. Oh, you're awesome. Thanks. Thank you.